Hi, my name is Kim McCarthy. I'm on the staff here at Tight Lines. And it may be the middle of winter, but it's not too early to start thinking about Spring Creek fishing. Um, I, I do spend a lot of time on Spring Creeks, and scuds have become one of my go-to flies. Uh, every, nobody should go to a Spring Creek without having a, a nice variety of scuds. My favorite colors are olive, tan, and orange anytime the water muddies up. But what people oftentimes don't think about when they're thinking about scuds is that it's good to have a variety of weights on your scuds at all times. Now everybody knows that scuds are fished deep, but the sink rate of a scud can make a big difference in how effective the scud is. If you're fishing slack water, uh, just about any scud will get down and, and do a fine job. But we all run into those situations where you've got a riffle that drops off into a deep pool and you need, to drop the, uh, you need to drop a scud very quickly right at the base of that riffle to get it down into the pool in a hurry. I'm going to tie today on a standard scud hook, the 2157, and we're going to be using a size 14 today. Scuds are tied pretty much in 12s, 14s, and 16s, and uh, probably the 14 is my most commonly used size. This is a barbed hook, so I'm going to start by pinching down the barb. Now the scud body that we're talking about is a hairline product, and it's simply called a ribbed tungsten body. They come in three sizes, and what I found is that on a size 14 hook, the extra small seems to give me the weight and the size that I'm looking for. Now what I've done is I've taken a couple different colors, the colors of the Arizona Scud Blend. I've chosen some olive and some, some grayish tan. And I've made myself a dubbing ball by blending those two different colors. Now you'll notice that this stuff is, has a very translucent look to it, sparkles very nicely. Later when we go to pick out the legs, you'll see that it does an excellent job of that as well. So we're simply going to start the thread. Bring it back about a quarter of a shank length and trim our thread. Now we've got our thread about a quarter of a shank length back and the first thing I'm going to add in here are some appendages on the front, column antenna, column and appendages. So what I've chosen here is just some squirrel tail. Um, I like it, it's, it's kind of multicolored, it's got a little white, it's got a little brown but it seems to work very well for this application. And I use several fibers. If some get where I don't want them to be, I'll just trim those off. And I do have a couple on the bottom, so I'll just get rid of those. The number is not critical. Um, you know, whether you have three or four or six sticking out is, is absolutely uncritical. Okay, and I brought my thread back just about to the to the barb point on the hook. Now holding the, uh, the scud form in my left hand, I simply bring that down and place it on top of the hook. And the, the only important thing here is to make sure that you don't bring it so far forward that you don't have any room to tie off on the front. And you don't have to be afraid to use a good number of wraps. It takes a good number to keep, to keep that body from spinning. Now at this point I want to stop and explain something else about why this fly can be so effective. Some people will say, well, why, why, why can't I do this whole thing simply by wrapping lead on the hook and then using a pliers to flatten it out? Well, if you take a lot of heavy lead wire and put it on the hook and then flatten it out, Think about what's going to happen to the gape on the hook. You're going to be closing up your gape and you're going to be losing an awful lot of hooking power. The scud form sits completely on top of the hook. You don't close that gap at all, so you're keeping all the hooking power um, in, in the scud pattern. I don't want to use a lot of dubbing wax, so what I do is I'll actually just put a little dubbing wax on a, on a finger. And I find that gives me just enough tackiness to do what I have to do. And I also don't want my dubbing on the thread to be very, very thick. So I'll just begin picking out 
little bits of dubbing and applying them to the thread. This is probably the most tedious part of the process. And you don't have to be real precise here if you are dubbing and you realize that you're not going to have enough. You can add a little more dubbing. And as I said, quantity. You just don't want it real thick or you end up with a real bulky coating over the top of the scud form. So you're trying to cover the scud form and I can already see I'm going to come up a little bit short. So I'm just going to add a little more dubbing. And then I'd simply look back and if there's any place on that scud form where a big wad of dubbing has built up, I can actually go back with the thread and just thin out those areas. And I see one area back here that I don't like. I just kind of go back, smooth that out, come back onto the head. At this point my dubbing is completed and I'm ready to whip finish. We have no shell back to pull over. We have no ribbing to pull over. We're actually ready to whip finish this fly. About seven or eight turns on the whip finisher and that fly is now anchored. And what you want to do is come in with a very sharp pointed bodkin and then just work either front to back or back to front really doesn't make any difference work into your dubbing and just start picking the legs out of the scud you're done and I'm going to pause for a moment and see if the camera can pick that up that's about the right number of, of legs out the bottom of the scud now there, there's one thing that is normally done on scuds that we haven't talked a whole lot about yet other than to say that we didn't have it and that's the shell back and rather than try and put a shell back on here and pull it over and then tie it down, we've got a new product that we're going to show you today. This is a product from Weta Hook. It's an epoxy type finish. A special ultraviolet light that actually comes out of the dental industry and is set up to cure this particular product. And I squirt just a very small amount of the resin onto a piece of plastic and then with my bodkin all I'm going to do is take small amounts of the resin and starting at the back of the scud I'm just going to put a very light coating of this resin along the back edge of the scud And at this point, I make sure that I wipe off my bodkin very well, because once this cures, it's not going anywhere. Then all we do, and this, uh, this light actually does, does come with an electrical connection, so you're not burning up batteries all the time. Flip it on. And at that point, what I usually do is just take my finger and make sure that it has cured. You'll feel it right away if it has not still a little bit tacky so I just come back in for a few more seconds and it is now fully cured now in reality it's probably taken me 10 or 15 minutes to explain this step by step uh, once a person ties a couple of these you can probably sit down and tie one of these in, in four or five minutes max and that is it that scud will go straight down when it comes tumbling out of a riffle into a pool. It may not be the prettiest thing in the world, but it's quick, it's heavy, and it does catch fish.